afternoon and thanks Alicia Frisia for inviting me and thank you to all of you for staying here until now. Nobody doubts today that the entitlement to enjoy a, swift, a suitable and safe environment is a human right of third generation and that its protection extends beyond national borders. During the last 50 years, environmental protection has become one of the most important and urgent issues on the international agenda. Pollution affects not only every country on Earth, regardless of their economic development or their pollution contribution, but it also affects future generations. Concerns about the effects of environmental deterioration have driven most part of the states to adopt several and ecological measures in order to stop or at least reduce this devastating process. Uh, within the broad spectrum of this measure, environmental taxes has gained an increasing prominence during the last year since the most part of the countries do already adopt some, some type of environmental taxes within their fiscal system. Environmental taxes are a highly mm, transversal legal issue because uh, we have a special influence uh, principally with, uh, by the environment and the tax laws. Uh, leaving aside all the other principles that guide these disciplines, we will focus on two of them regarding the environmental law, the political spray principle, and regarding the, ability to, the tax law, the ability to pay principle. This paper demonstrates on the one hand that we can distribute the ecological code through the environmental taxes by an appropriate and necessary coordination between these two principles. And on the other hand, that these two principles are linked by a major principle, the solidarity. In order to that, we will identify the different ways in which uh, tax law could help to protect the environment, and on the other hand, we will determine the content of each two principles within environmental taxes. So let's go. And tax law comprises three main ways to protect the environment. Each of them carries out this purpose from different angles, ecological taxes, ecological fiscal benefits, and the application of tax collection to ecological purposes. The ecological or environmental taxes are attributes whose primary purpose is not the tax collection itself, but the deterrence of activities or goods that fit in the environment, regardless of the application of the tax collection. So there are real attributes that they are governed by the same limits and principles that uh, regulate our charges with the constitution on the top. These levies require, as a main purpose, the discourage of anti ecological activities or behaviors, and as a secondary purpose, tax collection. Whereas the tax collection is not entirely aside, is more or less in the background. Although these uh, charges have a non-fiscal purpose, they never attempt to collect a null tax collection because they are taxes. The infraction penalty coupling does not apply to any tax, environmental taxes included, because penalties apply when an individual commits an infraction, and taxes apply when taxpayer makes a taxable event, and this event can never be considered an Fraction. And finally, the application of tax collection to ecological uses cannot, it's not an essential characteristic of, the, of these tributes because the key is the deterrence of the tax of event in anti ecological behaviors. However, it is possible to classify taxes according to the destination of the tax collection. Taxes whose tax collection are allocated to ecological destination or not. Environmental taxes and ecological fiscal benefits are both instituted by fiscal law and both seek to prevent or 
a separate environment. But while the first one attempts to discourage anti ecological activities, the second one um, seeks to promote pro environmental activities. And these benefits are not taxes per se, obviously, but they are incorporated into them, into not only environmental taxes, but also into non environmental taxes. And may involve the reduction, cancellation, or postponement of the fiscal liability. And finally, the tax law could also protect the environment with the allocation of tax collection to ecological uses. But here, the deterrent function of the taxable event does not matter. It could be present or not, but all or part of the tax collection must be allocated to cover or to fund ecological uses. Okay, the political spend principle. Many of have been tempted to explain this principle by a uh, literal view of the term involved, so taking the value of pollutant pay, this principle should for the polluters to internalize the ecological cause of their polluting activities. And although this idea has some merit, it is a restrictive and simplistic interpretation of this principle, failing to capture the true extent. So in order to understand the real scope and its relation, its connection with environmental tactics, if necessary, we, we must to analyze it from three different aspects. From the preventive aspect, polluted spell principles seek to prevent the occurrence of environmental damages by discouraging anti ecological behaviors and promoting pro ecological behaviors, activities, and goods. So, this aspect has two different subdimensions a dissociative and persuasive subdimensions. This dual aspect, the remedial and compensatory aspect within the polluted space principle, is associated with the post disaster action when the environmental damages has already occurred and when it is necessary to restore the environment or it is not possible to compensate society for harming a common use natural resource. Within the compensatory aspect, we can distinguish the punitive compensation and the distributive compensation. The first one is necessarily related with the notion, with the notion of illegality in the sense that uh, illegality refers to the fact that environmental damages are forbidden by regulation. And the second one is related with uh, legal conduits and imply that the legal system put the liability for environmental damages on the third party or upon the entire society. And finally, the punitive aspects imply the imposition of uh, criminal or administrative sanction on those who have carried out environmental damages. Pollution spread principle and environmental taxes. Environmental taxes require pollution to internalize the negative economic externalities derived from the, the pollution activities and bear the social costs that society would otherwise support. So, the idea is not to eliminate the economic activities, but to keep in within tolerable levels according to the principle of sustainable, sustainable development. This principle do not forbid or ban the economic uh, development, but promotes an ecological steady growth. It's aimed to satisfy present generation without compromising the satisfaction of future generation needs. So, according to the definition of environmental taxes, uh, we can anticipate that these levies operate within the preventive aspect, the dissociative subdimension, because these charges do not seek to return forms, uh, to return things to their former state, do not seek to punish the environmental damages, and do not seek to allocate the liability for environmental damages um, on third parties or upon the entire society. And according to the notion of 
distributive justice, we can say that the polluted pipe principle performs a distributive role for the repair of ecological damages, but not for income distribution. This is because polluters uh, internalize their ecological uh, cause of their pollution, but not the income distribution for individual property. But sometimes under this pollution, these taxes sometimes uh, follow a commutative justice in the sense that tax collection is applied to ecological purpose with an absolute reciprocity between duties and rights. This principle, this fiscal guide recognized in most of the Western countries' constitutions, is based upon the idea that taxpayers have limited resources to face the needs, so the financing public of their burden tax must be distributed among member according to their ability to pay. We can analyze this principle according to purpose, the legitimizing function and the limiting function. The first one is linked to the solidarity duty in the sense that constitutional justification of the tax contribution does not reside in a commutative relation between individuals and the society, but in a solidarity relation which ties each individual to his community. And the limiting function is linked to the fiscal legislative competencies and in the sense that the taxpayers should only contribute according to their ability to pay operating as a limit for the legislature. So, considering this principle, uh, it's necessary to contribute this standard must guide the spirit of ecological taxes too, because the equitable distribution of the burden tax cannot be sacrificed to achieve these purposes regardless of their importance. The question is how we can regulate governmental taxes related with income from polluting activities, consumption of polluting goods, or possession of polluting heritages. Conclusions. The environmental taxes that have to be guided always by these two principles by taking into account both the contributing capacity and the polluting capacity. Because if a levy is taxed outside the principle or the polluted pay principles, it's not an environmental taxes. It could be a tax but without its ecological connotation. And if a levy is established outside the polluted pay principle, it's, uh, this tax will lose its legitimacy and its fiscal sense. So nobody questions the distributive function of tax law, environmental taxes included, because the taxes spread the repair of environmental damages only among polluters, internalizing the cost of the uh, polluting activities. And these taxes, on the other hand, spread the environmental burden among polluters uh, according to their economic possibilities, requiring much more economic effort from individuals who are wealthier. And finally, we can affirm that these two principles are placed in the shadow of the principle of solidarity, because the duty to pay taxes to cover public expenses is based on the solidarity of each member of the community to contribute according to their ability to pay, even if these levies, uh, if this duty implies to contribute much more than the others. And this duty, the duty to pay taxes to repair environmental damages is based not only on being responsible for generating environmental damages, but also on the solidarity of each member of the community in sharing the ecological cause within the community. Thank you very much.